This is the Great Watcher Broadcaster Network. I'm Apostle Paul Harris, and I am a Native American preacher, and I preach to the called and to the chosen and to the faithful. Welcome to Wolf Moon Celebration. I'm 
you got to believe in Jesus Christ. You may be asking, why are you calling this program the Wolf Moon Celebration? Because the full moon outside is the Wolf Moon, the first full moon of the beginning of the year of 2022. And the wolf is one of the animals in our world that's clever. But at the same time that he's clever, he's sly, he's sneaky, knows what he wants, knows when he really wants it the most in a world that's being discovered in such a way. And today's topic is going to be natural law and objective truth. Let's continue on singing and praise and magnify the name of the Lord. Come on and 
On this good evening, I come to praise and to magnify and to lift up the name of the Lord. It's above every name that I know of in this world that we're living in. The next song we're going to do, in the sweet, by and by.
Hey, hey, hey. 
With all the stuff that is going on, with the pandemic and the difficult situations, the wars, the lies and the deceptions, and everything that is happening in this world, sometimes there is a foundation of God's word that must be. Without a shadow of a doubt, be explained. And that's why today we're talking about this subject of natural law and objective truth. When you look at natural law and you look at objective truth, you have to look at the various 
paradigms that are around us. Religion is a set of beliefs that has a leader and then it has its followers. It has a way of donations and a set of beliefs. And just as religion has all of that, so does the political realm. It has a name. It has its leaders. It has its followers. It has its beliefs. And it has its congregations. And when the founding fathers of the United States of America gave us what is called religious freedom, they also gave the clause that Congress shall in no wise make a law establishing a religion in the land. But sad to say, they have established a religion. You see, here in the United States of America, whether you know it or not, it is a corporation. And a corporation that can have what is called the 5013C establishment into its political realm, calling itself a religion because it has a chief CEO, whether we call it the President of the United States, and then it has all its board of directors and various people surrounding that. But when the political realm starts establishing its own ideology and its own principles and and rules and regulation, it becomes a religion just like Christianity is a religion, Hinduism is a religion, Islam is a religion, Buddhism is a religion, and all these religions have their people, their leaders, and their their set beliefs and so forth. So does the political realm. And one of the sad things about any religious system is when it tries to impose its religious ideology onto the other people. Because the leaders in the religion think that they have the right to impose these ideas. Just like in our political world, um, they believe that because they have been quote-unquote voted in their positions, they have the right to, to dictate what rules and regulations that the ones that voted them in are to abide by. Anyone in the Christian church would know that pastors should not be dictators. They should not be bulldozing bulldogs, but they are servants to the people that relies on their teaching and their preaching to instill hope and vision and things into the church. Well, when those pastors become dictators and they become psychopathic lunatics, as I call them, they start making rules and regulations on to the people to abide by their rules and regulations. And some of their rules and regulations will deal with money. Well, it's the same thing in political realm. In the political realm, you vote these people in and you use part of your paycheck to pay taxes to them. And then they get paid by your taxes that you pay to them. Just, just like tithes are paid to a pastor or to a church uh, it, they become your dictators, but you're paying them to do a service and a work, but they become a dictator. This is what happened in, a, in our political realm. Our political leaders, instead of being servants and helping the human race and establishing peace and tranquility and hope and, and all those kind of things, they establish rules and regulations that they, them themselves don't want to follow, but they expect everybody else to follow these rules. It's kind of like the old phrase you hear a lot of times don't do as I do but do as I say and we get that a lot in our political realm you remember the last couple of years when we had all the mask mandates being established to the common folks but you would see your political leaders sitting in restaurants and sitting in salons and and various other places without their mask coming in without the mask leaving without the mask but then they would get up behind the podium in various news outlets and tell everybody else you need to wear your 
mask. If you don't wear your mask and you don't get these shots and, and, and so on, we will cause you to lose your jobs because now your employers now can use the same position of dictatorship as the political Rins because in politics it, it it trickles down. We we call it trickle down economics, which there is no such thing as trickle down economics because those that have the most money are they transfer any of their money to the common folks? No, they're not. And are they paying the people a uh, a useful, um, productive wage? No, they're not. And so we live in a world ruled by psychopathic. Lunatics. That's what I tell them. And, and, and let me stress this very important to you. They were psychopathic lunatics before you voted them in. They didn't become that after they got voted in. They used Clive deception. They used deceit to get you to vote them. Just like the moral majority that was established back in the early 1980s. You remember when Jerry Farwell and all his religious fanatics got together and they decided to all join the Republican Party. And they convinced the Republican Party to make a deal with the moral majority that that they would stop abortion. And so that was the issue. And then later on, another issue that came into the foundation was the GLBT movement. And so now the Republican Party, part of their platform is supposedly to stop abortion and to leeway the passing of bills and laws concerning the LGBT. But, you know, Republican parties know how to use religious jargon to get people's attention. All they're going to do is say Jesus and everybody's shouting and dancing and running the aisles and, and eyes rolling the back of their heads. Oh, he must be a Christian because he said Jesus. He said God. He said the power of the church and all those kind of things. Let's continue to vote him in while capitalism is flirting higher and higher and the minimum wage people are still surviving week after week after week in getting their survival Paychecks coming week after week, and you're living paycheck by paycheck, and then you have these psychopathic lunatics always saying that they're, they're broke and they need more money, and so they put more money into their businesses, more money into psychological damaging people's ideology and all those kind of things, and they continue to get rich, and the poor continues to get poor, and now you don't even have the middle class anymore because the middle class is living paycheck by paycheck, and it's all because these psychopathic lunatics know how to irritate the population that's around them. And because they're so sly and conniving and use deceit and deception, they continue to this very day in Pose a lot of unnatural laws and a lot of subjective ideology unto the rest of humankind, and it calls the rest of human humankind to be divided between you know the duality of right and wrong, good and bad, and, and, and so forth, and all those kind of things. Kind of like the thing that went on in the Garden of Eden when the devil told Eve, "If you'll partake of this tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will become like as God." And Eve and Adam partake of this tree. And now that they have the knowledge of good and evil, they don't know what to do with it. Well, it's the same thing with the culture today. We have the knowledge of good and evil, but we don't know what to do with it because we don't know what's good. We don't know what's evil. We don't know what's right, what's wrong. And we let the political psychopathic lunatics convince to us what is good, what's bad, what's evil, what's right, and all those kind of things. And this thing just keeps insinuating and going on and on and on and on. Now, you may be asking, now, why are you saying all of this? Because all of this is a result of rejecting natural law and objective truth. You see, when the common man relies on someone that he voted in to decide what is truth, the psychopathic lunatic, the only thing that's truth to him or her is mammon. You know, that word in the Bible is, it said you can't love God and mammon at the same time. Their job is to make money for their corporation. 
And so any senator, any governor, any mayor, their job is to bring in revenue, not really to please the common man. Every once in a while, they might pass a little rule here and there that may please the common man. But in, in, in reality, those little rules, those little regulations only binds other people while they get special, you know, treatment and all this kind of thing. And that's what goes on in this world that we're living in. But when you start talking about natural law and you start talking about an objective truth, people's start shaking and shivering and and, and and the brain starts going through a farting situation because when you start talking about natural law and objective truth, they can't see beyond their feelings and their emotions. And that's why in the political realm, it's all ruled by your feelings and your emotions, not by truth, not by natural laws, but by my feelings, by my emotions. My feeling is I need to decide, you know who I am, what I am, and where I should go, and everybody else should follow in the same line. And so we're going by feelings and emotions instead of by natural law and objective truth. You see, our culture today has something we call morals. Those things we consider right, uh, those things that we consider good, uh, those things we consider honest and love and peace and happiness and all those kind of things. And so does those that live in, in, in the frame of the mind in subjective truth. Uh, I have truth, too, and you should accept me as I am, even though my truth may violate natural law or objective understanding to society and culture and even the word of God. My, my feelings will conquer those things. And so when you're talking about natural law, these are the things when God created the universe and the sun and the moon and the stars and the planet Earth, he established certain natural and spiritual laws in the earth. Remember in the beginnings, God says this, let there be light. And the first thing about this light, it is the very exposure to the truth that's all around you. Because light, when it shines, you can see everything around you clearly. And if you move the light in various degrees, even the shadows that things sit in front of that hides can also be exposed and be illuminated. And that's how God began the phases of the planet Earth by establishing light in the world. And how did he establish light in the world? He used it by establishing his word. Because what's the first thing that God does when he creates heaven and earth? He speaks. He says, let there be light. And behold, there was light. And he said it was very good. And this light is the truth that impermeates the entire universe. It impermeates the sun and the moon and the stars because he even says that he placed the sun and the moon and the stars to be a sign unto you for days, weeks, months, and years. The sun and the moon and the stars can tell us what time of the day it is, what day of the month it is, what year it is, even what constellation is ruling with the sun and moon and stars. And nothing can deviate any of that because God established those natural laws in our universe, using the sun and the moon and the stars to establish time, days, weeks, months, and years and all of those things. And you cannot deviate from those no matter what you're doing. If you work a six-day-a-week job and you're required to get up at 7 o'clock because it takes you two hours to get dressed and you have to be on your job at 9 o'clock, you're established by the sun and the moon and the stars because they establish your time, your day, your week, your month, and your year. And when you deviate from that, your boss may not like it. He may fire you because you come in late because you know you're Time is 9 a.m. to come in on your job. That is a natural, fixated, natural law that has been established in the earth. Even with our relationship with our creator, 
there is a natural tendency within each and every human being that has a desire to reach out to something beyond himself or herself. He knows there's something out there because if he looks at the sky, he sees the universe. And if he sees the universe, he sees the sun and the moon and the stars. And even though the sun and the moon and the stars are fixated in their positions and their points and, and, and the way they operate in the universe, he knows within his consciousness there is something real out there that has devised and placed all of this into its order because you and I with our finite minds could not go out there in space and you know I think the sun needs to be right here to keep us warm I think the moon needs to be right here to do its duty for the night I think the stars should only come out when I want them to come out you and I don't have the ability to go out there and and tell all of them what to do, but the Creator does have the ability to do that. Now, if the Creator has the ability to establish where the sun and the moon and the stars and how they operate and how they move within the galaxy and with the solar system and the universe, I I think that this Creator also knows how to establish rules between us and Him and also between one another. This is where natural law comes to the earth. And when you start talking about natural law, as I said earlier, it does cause people to have fighting positions in their brains because when you start talking about something that's natural, their feelings and their emotions and their uh, um, uh, the court starts, you know, c- coming into play. But what about my feelings? What about my emotion? I feel this. I, 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 I want things to be like this. And they try to bypass those things that are natural. You know, you natural in, in the animal world. It takes a male and a female to create a child. That's natural. Um, it's also in the human race. It takes a male and a female to come together to to birth a child. And you can't do it. Even if you do artificial insemination, you still have to have the sperm and the egg to create that child. There's just no other way. I don't care with all the cloning that they come up with, with all the genetic ideologies that they come up with, you're still going to need a sperm and you're still going to need an egg to establish life. Those are natural laws that are in the earth and with all the things that are going on in the world, you cannot deviate from natural law. Now, in natural law, there is something that came out of the light of God when he said, let there be light. He also established truth in the earth. One of the things that Jesus, our Savior and our Deliverer and our Healer established in the earth. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And, and, he, and even Pilate looked at Jesus one day and he says, what is truth? And so man has been looking for truth and, and they've been looking in all the wrong directions. Because they think the political realm has the truth. And if you look at the political realm today, you know they don't have the truth. And they, they look at religion, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, uh, 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 whatever. And, and they're finding out that even our religious institutions have some of the truth, but not enough to, to cause the human race to get a vital understanding to the things that are around us. So, but objective truth the creator can decide what those are. You and I cannot decide what truth is because we can't even decide how to live our own personal lives. And so we use the subjective ideas that we conceive in our minds to be truth. And I want everybody around me to accept me for what I am. Not what objective truth said you are, but by my feelings. And we know that feelings and emotions have the tendency to change daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. I mean, just look at the culture of United States of America. The things that we believe and the things that we accept today, we would have never believed and accept those things 30 or 40 or 50 years ago. 
And the reason why is because we let subjective truth, that means truth, can be changed over a period of time. And so our political psychopathic lunatics will pass laws and regulations and rules to pacify the people that are ruled by their feelings and by their emotions. And so, you go to the average town, to average city, you have 50,000 laws that are on the book. And Lord God knows how many laws we have in the United States of America in the rule books of that because every day the Senate and the President and the, and the Congress, every day they're passing laws one, one after the other. And a lot of the laws we don't understand and we don't comprehend until they come knocking on doors and say, you know what, you just broke the law. And then you say, what law? Well, you stepped out on your property the wrong way or you don't cut your grass the right way or you don't park your car the right place. And now all your raw rules and regulations have become part of you because now instead of going by natural thinking and objective truth, they are establishing subjective rules because even with these laws and regulations they even change or they amend it to all the time. We have amendments to our our constitution because our constitution is being changed every day and it's because people cannot accept objective morality, they cannot accept a natural law and so they use subjective ideologies to try to figure out all of those things. And so where are we at today? We have some decisions that we have to make. But you got to understand some truth. There is a creator. And that's God. The creator sent the Savior 2,000 years ago. That would be Jesus Christ. Jesus tells his church. And that's us. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We are his church. We are establishing his kingdom in the earth. Not the Republican Party, not the Democratic Party, not the Green Party, not the Liberal Party, not the Feel My Way Party or my emotional party, but we are to establish the kingdom of God in the earth. Remember 2,000 years ago when Jesus came on the earth, what did he do? He says, repent for the kingdom of God is near. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You see, in the kingdom of God, it establishes the natural law into the earth. It establishes objective truth in the earth. You remember I said earlier, it causes people to shake and shiver and go through a fart brain, brain fart and all those kind of things because it it challenges their feelings and their emotions. Because once you establish objective truth, object, objective truth cannot be changed. It cannot be wavered. It cannot be amended. It cannot be based upon feelings. It cannot be based upon ideology that, that you come up with, whether through philosophy, psychology, or whatever. It is established truths that are in the earth. And this is where natural laws and objective truth comes from. And Our government has failed for thousands of years to abide by natural laws. They have failed in the last few thousand years to uphold to objective truth. Just because you have the monument in many of our towns and many of our cities and many of our states, the Ten Commandments listed as part of monuments and plaques and all those kind of things, it doesn't mean that the, the psychopathic leaders that's supposed to be operating in the world are abiding by those Ten Commandments that's on the monument. So it makes no difference whether the Ten Commandments are there if people People are not abiding by it. And it has to start with the leaders. And you've been finding out over the years that they've been breaking every one of the Ten Commandments left and right and up and down because the Ten Commandments is the first establishment of bringing forth objective truth in the earth. Now, whether you and I like it, my feelings had nothing to do with it. My emotions had nothing to do with it. My pre- preconceived ideas had nothing to do with it. Those Ten Commandments are the objective truth, the beginning stage of the objective truth that has been established in the earth. In fact, it's a proven fact. When the Ten Commandments are upholded in society, 
It does call peace and harmony and joy and happiness, all those kind of things. Just look at divorce by itself. It's easy to get married here in the United States of America, but it's very difficult to get to get a divorce. You can go to the courthouse, and in most states, you can buy a, a license for almost 45, 50 bucks. And whether the kind of wedding you want to have, you can have a small or a medium or large weather. You can d- decide how big you want your weather and how, how much money you want to spend in your wedding. But when the divorce comes along, you find out it wasn't a wedding between two people that fall, fell in love, but it was a contract between, between two people where everything is split between the middle. You can have a, a spouse that's committed adultery on you and wind up getting 50%, if not more, of the possessions that came between the two spouses. It's because we're not going by objective truth. We're not going by natural law, but we're going by what? The law of the land. And so we're being convinced and we're being taught in our churches the law of the land is higher than the law of God. And you find out our world is in such a predicament that it's in. You know, even Paul says when you take take each other... uh, in court matters, don't take it before the worldly courts, but do it within the church. And I can see why Paul would say legal matters should be done in the church and not in the political realm, because if, if they could give you a piece of paper to marry you, they could also give you a piece of paper to divorce you to. Whether the divorce is valid scripturally, and, and divorce can, you know, be given for almost any reason in the common area of the political rim. But when God established natural laws and he established um, objective truth, one of those truths was to protect marriage. Jesus says marriage was not always as it is today, but because of the hardening of people's hearts, marriage is giving. But is divorce the perfect will? No, it's not the perfect will. Even when he gave the stipulation of adultery being a reason to divorce, he still found it on divorce. And then Paul comes along and says, it's good for a man not to touch a woman, but if he does and he desires to touch a woman, let him be married. But if he can, he would be better off to be single. That's in 1 Corinthians. And that's a whole different story and a whole different ideology that's found over there concerning divorce and marriage. But, but again and again, getting back to the purpose of today's lesson, natural law and objective truth is in the earth. And you'll find it every every day with all the all the laws and the rules and the regulations that your psychopathic lunatic uh, religious leaders remember politics is just as much of a religion as your church is. It has its boss, it has its subjects, it has its rules and regulations, and, and all three are against the natural law that has been established in the universe and in the earth, in God, and even in us, our relationship. Now, here's where things get difficult. Because we're living in the year 2022, when you start talking about natural law and objective truth, most people don't know what natural law is. The average person don't know what objective truth is because when they went through their 12 years of psychological education in the public school system, they never talked about natural laws. They never talked about objective truth because remember, truth to them changes. It can change daily. It can change weekly. It can change monthly. It can change yearly. And and when you have people that don't know what natural law and objective truth, they, they will teach sub, subjective ideologies based upon feelings and emotions. And, and the, the main feeling and the main emotion, I call it the Trinity. It's me and myself and I. Just like God is a Trinity, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
You and I have a trinity, me and myself and I. And I want everything given to me now, just like like McDonald's. When you go to McDonald's, I want a hamburger and I want it now. When I go to Burger King, I want a hamburger, want it now. When I go to a restaurant where food has got to be cooked, we get fidgety and we get, you know, complaining because we have to wait 20, 30 minutes for the meal to be cooked because me and myself and I want everything now. And not only do I want it now, but I want it to be done now. And, and I want it to taste the way I taste. If I don't like it, I don't want to pay it because I'm going by my feelings and my emotions. And this is where the earth is in such a turmoil. Over there in Romans chapter 8, it teaches... That the earth is moaning and groaning. I used to baffle my mind every time I'd read that. What does it mean that the earth is moaning and groaning? Well, right now, the earth is in such a commotion. There's earthquakes everywhere. There's tornadoes everywhere. There's hurricanes everywhere. There's storms in places that's never had storms. We're getting snow in places that never had snow, like Texas and, and Southern Florida. Who ever heard of Southern Florida getting snow? But ne- these days, Southern Florida is getting snow. Places in Texas that, that are deserts, they are getting snow. What's going on? The earth is moaning and it's groaning. Let me tell you the reason why the earth is moaning and groaning. The word says in Romans 8 that the earth is waiting on the manifestations of the sons of God in the earth. It's been waiting. It's still waiting. You and I, as the people of the Most High, we do not realize and understand the power and the authority that we have in this earth. And I thank God for preachers like Kenneth Copeland and Creflo Dollar and Kenneth Hagin. He passed away many years ago. And Benny Hinn and, and Joyce Myers and all the others that have taught us the word of faith. And it's good they've taught us. But have we practiced what was preached to us? No. Because in this day and age that we're living in, we're walking by our fear We're walking walking by our feelings and our emotions instead of operating in the word of faith. You know where we're supposed to speak prophetic things in the earth? You know, when people are sick, there was a time in the church that we would go to the church and the elders would pray for the people and they would be healed. But now... Our psychopathic lunatics are telling us, don't go to church if you're sick, stay at home. And then our religious leaders follow in pursuit do the very same thing. Stay at home. You're sick. What the scripture says, if any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them what? Anoint him and pray for him, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord, and he shall, what, what? He shall be healed. You see, it's the job Listen to me. It's the job of the people of God to operate in the earth to change the circumstances of things that are around us. Remember, when Jesus, before he went to heaven, he he looked at his disciples and he told him, In my name, you shall cast out devils. In my name, you shall heal the sick. In my name, you shall raise the dead. In my name, you will speak in new tongues. That is the operation of God's people. But instead of doing those things, we're sitting in our churches or in our homes complaining, walking in doubt, walking in confusion, and walking in all these things in the world instead of walking in the Spirit. You hear me preach many times here at the Grace Watcher Broadcasting Network that is very important, very vital that we walk in the Spirit. And even though I'm talking about natural laws and objective truth, the only way that natural law and objective truth will ever be established is got to come out of your mouth. Just like it came out of God's mouth in the beginning. When he says, let there be light. Remember, when God created man, he says, let us Speak it to the creation. Let us make man after our image and after our likeness. What does that mean? As the devil told Adam and Eve, partly truth, 
When you eat of the knowledge of tree of good and evil, you will be like God. God says later on in Genesis 3, man has become as one of, this is what God said, man has become as one of us. And Jesus comes on the scene 2,000 years ago and he says the very same thing. Behold, I give unto you power. Listen to this. Listen to me very carefully. You have the power and you have the authority to operate in the earth. Despite with all the feelings and the emotions and the chaotic things that are going around us, God has given us natural ability. Let me tell you something. The gifts of the Spirit are, should be natural things that goes on in a believer's life. Listen to me. The gifts of the Spirit need to be operated in your life on a daily basis. When devils come confronting you, instead of pacifying the devil, you should be rebuking the devil and sending him away. When sicknesses and diseases and infirmities come over your body, you need to be speaking, I am healed by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me. It's very important. And very vital that you understand what I'm talking about. When God establishes natural law and objective truth in the earth, when they are violated, listen to this, we go against them, it will cause problems in the earth. Look at me now. The world is in a situation as it is. But as I said over there in Romans chapter 8, the earth is moaning and groaning because it's waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. What did John say? Behold what men of love that the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called what? The children of the living God. God. You are the children of God. God has given you principles. He's given you objective truth that is found in his whole being in you. If he made you and I after his image and after his likeness why are we not operating into things that are part of his image and his likeness? Come on now. Listen to me. You have to operate in the earth as sons and daughters of the living God. Despite what people's feelings and emotions and ideology is, you are the son and daughters of the living God. He has given you gifts to bring the earth back. Listen to this. To its correct order. And only the people in the church can do that. Because we've seen people in the political realm that are failing every day. The medical profession is failing every day. Now, we've got some God-fearing people in the political realm, and we've got some God-fearing people in psychological realm and so forth, even in the news media, but it's far less than the ones that the psychopathic lunatics are running everything have. But can I throw this at you? Start letting these psychopathic lunatics convince you that you're a psychopathic lunatic. Because you're a child of the son of the living God. You are a daughter of the son of the living God. 
You are blessed by God. You are anointed by God. You have the healing power by God. You have the joy of God in your life. You have the peace of God in your life. You have the joy of God in your life. You have happiness in your life. You have everything that God wants you to have. He wants you to walk in everything that's of him. He wants you to see his peace. He wants you to see his joy. He wants you to have all of these things in your life. You don't have to be defeated. You don't have to be destroyed. You don't have to be walking around with fear and unbelief and doubt in your life. You can have the things of God. You can have the blessings of God. You can have the power of God. You can have the glory of God. You can have the healing of God. You can have everything that God is because God says he is that he is. If he is the I am that I am, you can have all of these things. You don't have to walk around with fear. You don't have to walk around with doubt. You don't have to walk around with confusion. You know that God is in control. And if God is in control, he can use you in such a mighty and a glorious and a mighty way in this earth. Stop walking around with doubt and confusion about your feelings, about your emotions, but use the power that God has placed inside you. Use the authority that God has placed inside you. Use the power that God has placed inside you. Use all the good things that God has placed inside you. Because when God puts the good things inside of you, nothing in this world can change your life. Nothing in this world can take anything away from you that God wants you to have. God said he is the I am that I am. He is the God of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob and if he could take care of them and he could take care of those of the early church he could do the same thing for you because God loves his church God loves his people God loves his sons God loves his daughters let him wrap you up in his love let him wrap you up in his joy let him wrap you up in his power because God has these things to be instilled inside of you and there's nothing in this world that will take away the love of God that's in your life there's nothing in this way that will take away the peace of God that's in your life there's nothing in this world that'll take away the things that you need the most in your life because God is in control. God is watching. God is protecting. God is healing. God is delivering. God is still saving the people. God is still doing all these things and all you got to do is let your faith be strong in God. Even when the apostles came to Jesus one day said increase our faith. He looked at them and he breathed on them and said receive ye the Holy Ghost and that's the very same thing he wants to do to you today. God I need you to increase my faith. I need you to build my faith. I need you to help my faith to get stronger. I need you to help my faith to give me more power, give me more authority, give me more ability in the earth. And God says, I will increase your faith. I will give you the faith that you need. I will give you the joy that you need. I will give you the happiness that you need because I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am that I am. And Jesus said the same thing when he walked in. He says, I am. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the light of the world. I am all these things. What more do you need in this earth when you've got the power of God in your life? What more do you need in this earth when you've got the joy of the Lord in your life? What more do you need in this earth when you got everything that you need and God will bless you abundantly. God will touch you abundantly. God will heal you abundantly. God will take the demonic strongholds that are in your life and he will remove each and every one of them because God ah, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, glory to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to his name. Ah, yes. You listening to me? God wants to use you to do the things in the earth that needs to be done. Go out and establish his natural laws and objective truth. Objective truth is, if you and I are made in his image, listen to this, and we're made in his likeness, first thing, he wants each and every one of us saved. That's right. He wants each and every one of us to be born again. He wants each and every one of us to be filled with his Holy Spirit. Listen to me. He wants each and every one of us to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Listen to me. He wants each and every one of us to be the manifestation of the sons of God in the earth. That means going around, convincing people to be saved, casting out demons, laying hands on the sick and watching them recover. Come on. Come on, preach the gospel, the the good news in all the earth. Preach that the kingdom of God is in the earth and God is moving and God is healing. He's touching, he's blessing and all those, all those things. 
and you and I will be a powerhouse in the earth. Are you listening to me? God wants you to be a powerhouse in the earth. Be blessed. And thank you for listening to today's edition of the Grace Watcher Broadcasting Network. And this is Apostle Paul Harris, and I am a Native American preacher, and I preach to the called and to the chosen and to the faithful.